Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, we're here today to have an in conversation with Jova Baglioli Reyes and Sonia Gina Stafka. Um, we're so excited to have them here today as a sort of introduction to the Spanish collection that Jova has been co curating for us for the Manchester Poetry Library. Manchester Poetry Library is a public library based in central Manchester. Um, anyone can become a member on our website. Um, and we've been developing um, our languages collection from the beginning. Um, they're all co-curated with a poet who speaks that language so that the books really come from a personal place rather than us choosing the first 10 that come up on Google. So we've been working with Jova for a couple of months now, I think, um, and they've been really focused on well, they'll tell you a lot more, um, but they've been really focused on Latin American poets and some indigenous languages, um, and they've been doing some really, really fantastic work. And next time you come into the Poetry Library, um, you can explore that collection. But um, I want to introduce Jova. So Jova, um, I'll do a very small bio for you because you probably won't do it for yourself. Um, Jova is a open for myself. I don't want to miss anything out. Um, Jova is a queer Chilean Colombian poet based in Manchester and they're also a Manchester multilingual city poet nominated as part of International Multilingual Day um, and Jova is co-curated the Spanish collection with us and they also perform their music and poetry um, across Manchester and are doing really really exciting work so welcome Jova. Thank you, Roma. It's so nice to be here. Um, hi. <laughs> um, I'm, um, I'm really excited to like present this collection because I think, um, A, it's sorely needed in Manchester, especially considering that um, I feel like uh, Latina, Latin American like communities are very sorely underrepresented in Manchester and are one of the fastest growing demographics in the UK. Um, but also because I it, it was just such an exciting like chance to really explore different kinds of poetry within the Spanish so called, you know, canon. Um, the way that I kind of started making this um, curation and it was actually a little funny because I, I was a, a little scared that I wasn't going to have like enough to show for it so I was like telling Roma oh, I'm so scared I'm gonna have like 10 books or like 10 poets and that's it like what am I gonna do and um, I ended up with a lot more than that so <laughs> you know but it's good I'm really excited um, the way that I went about like uh, arming this collection well, I kind of gave myself some limits at first and I said, first, we're not going to have any Spaniards, no Spaniards whatsoever, because um, in for, for those of us who, you know, might be Latine in Manchester or in England, like there are enough Spanish people here. Uh, most of the Spanish people, uh, Spanish speaking people here are from Spain. Um, and while there is a lot culturally um, and politically that um, Spain, like Spanish poetry can give to us, I don't want to focus on it because I wanted to focus on um, the other side of like the Spanish speaking world, in other words, the colonized world, um, Latin America or Abiyayala, uh, as we, you know, we can call it sometimes. Um, as well as Equatorial Guinea, which is an African country whose official language is Spanish and is often very like, is not even mentioned in the conversation. So I really wanted to give um, that focus that I think is very, very important politically speaking. Uh, but also I wanted to focus on the communities from these countries, from these uh, places that are marginalized, vulnerable, and underrepresented. So I wanted to focus on queer poetry. I wanted to focus on um, First Nations poetry, especially in um, Aboriginal languages such as Quechua, Quichua, Mapudungun, Guarani. Um, and we do have a lot of those like languages in the collection, which I'm so, so excited for. Um, 
I wanted to represent like feminist poetry, especially like revolutionary feminist poetry. And I wanted to uh, represent uh, contemporary poetry that is um, very up and coming and not, um, let's say, uh, necessarily exalted today. Um, so like I, I spoke to a couple of like community publishing houses in Bogota, in Chile, and in Santiago, you know, um, who are doing very important like um, community work, um, publishing like anthologies and magazines and zines um, that reflect the political realities of our countries today. Um, I also wanted to include Black voices um, in this collection because Afro-Latine voices are regularly silenced um, because racism is a huge, huge, huge problem in our countries and in our communities, which is not talked about enough. Um, and I really wanted to, you know, make, um, not make a statement, but just kind of like uh, reflect the realities that don't get told, the stories that don't get told in our communities or by our like, um, you know, our, our institutions. Um, I didn't want to include very many big poets, like everyone knows Pablo Neruda, everyone knows uh, Gabriel Garcia Marquez, everyone knows uh, Borges and stuff. So it's not really necessary, I don't think. We can add that to the collection later, but initially I wanted to focus on those like either small time or um, underrepresented writers. Uh, so I'm so, so, so excited to like present this collection. And mostly I'm so excited to like read a lot of the poetry from it because uh, it's gonna be so, so good. Um, yeah, and yeah, so um, I'm actually, one second. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna read some excerpts from the um, the the collection now. I'm gonna read some uh, now, and I'm gonna read some like towards the end of the event, um, just so that we we're not like too pressed for time. Um, so I'm gonna start with um, Gabriela Mistral, who is the biggest poet in this collection. Um, the first. Uh, Nobel Prize of Literature winner for Latin America, who was a very radical revolutionary feminist lesbian woman from Chile. Um, I thought that if anyone, if we were going to include any big poets, it was going to be her. I'm going to read a poem from the collection Desolacion, uh, which is um, of the same title called Desolacion. So here goes. La bruma espesa, eterna, para que olvide dónde, me ha arrojado la mar en su ola de salmuera. La tierra que a la que vine no tiene primavera, tiene su noche larga que cual madre me esconde. El viento hacia mi casa su ronda de sollozo, y alarido y quiebra como un cristal mi grito. En la llanura blanca de horizonte infinito, miro morir intensos ocasos dolorosos. ¿A quién podrá llamar la que hasta? aquí ha venido si más lejos que ellas solo fueron los muertos tan solo ellos contemplan un mar callado y yerto crecer entre sus brazos y los brazos queridos los barcos cuyas velas blanquean en el puerto vienen de tierras donde no están los que no son míos sus hombres de ojos claros no conocen mis ríos y traen frutos pálidos sin la luz de mis huertos Y la interrogación que sube a mi garganta, al mirarlos pasar, me desciende vencida. Hablan extrañas lenguas y no la conmovida, lengua que en tierras de oro mi pobre madre canta. Miro bajar la nieve como el polvo en la huesa, miro crecer la nieve, la niebla, como el agonizante. Y por no enloquecer, no encuentro los instantes, porque la noche larga ahora tan solo empieza. Miro el llano estaciado y recojo su duelo, que viene para ver los paisajes mortales. La nieve es el semblante que asoma mis cristales. Siempre será su albura bajando de los cielos. Siempre ella, silenciosa, como la gran mirada, de Dios sobre mí, siempre suar, azar, sobre mi casa. 
siempre como el destino que ni mengua ni pasa, descenderá a cubrirme, terrible y extasiada. That was Desolación by uh, Gabriela Mistral, and you will be able to come and read it whenever you want at the Manchester Poetry Library, um, whenever it gets there. Uh, um, I'm going to read another poem, and then we're going to move on. And this one is by Juan Malboa Boneque, who is a um, Equatorial Guinean uh, writer, one of the most important of the Equatorial Guinean canon. Um, he wrote this poem called Volveré uh, during his exile from the country. And I'm going to read it to you now, just an excerpt from it anyway. Volveré. Volveré algún día a cruzar mi arbola, arboleda, a beber el remanso del hilache, a recostarme sosegado en el césped de mi ojo y admirar el cielo estrellado de mi noche tropical. Volveré. Volveré algún día a correr tras el venado, a recibir el aroma del helecho recién cegado, a escuchar los relatos y leyendas de mi respetable ancianidad. Volveré. Algún día volveré. Um, I don't think that one is actually in the collection we're including of his, but he's got some like amazing poems, so come down and read them too. I will say that a lot of the um, collections that we do have don't have English translations. Some of them do. Um, but I encourage you to come and uh, analyze them anyway, even like talk to maybe somebody who might be there to help you like, uh, maybe me or somebody else who might help you like understand the poems and the context behind them. Um, if I'm there, of course. But anyway, um, I'm going to actually, read a poem of mine because I want to plug myself eh? <laughs> but I'm going to read a poem of mine in Spanish um, and then we're going to move on to our exciting super exciting guest um, but I'm not going to tell you your name yet so you're going to wait all right this poem is called um, oratorio oráculo rayo ramo ramírez raíz arroz arriba arena, arrasar, arrinconado y abandonado, anestesiado y adoctrinado. Doctor, director, dirige y disimula, diócesis, diácono, dogmático, católico, cura y corona, Cristóbal, colón, colonia, mi, mi colonia, mi Colombia, mi clavo, mi cruz. Cruza la frontera, falsa y fluida, felices fiestas, flota en la marea. Ave María, llena eres de gracia. Maldita mujer, miserable, malparida. Maldito maricón, sino muerto, enfermo. Eterno, erótico, exótico, caótico. Química alquímica de cadera y canto. Sancocho, deme coraje, cordillera al infinito. Indio, ingrato, inca, invisible. Imbécil, ignorante, inmortal e invencible. Será solamente la santísima soberbia, sudaca que sufre su sabrosura y su pena. Pueblos perdidos en pozos podridos, postrados bajo el peso de tanto oro robado. Rata, ridículo, arrepiéntete reo. Retornamos y la rueda que rota arranca de nuevo. Thank you very much. Um, And now I am so, so, so excited to have the honor of presenting Sonia Guiñanzaca, an amazing, incredible uh, Latina queer uh, poet um, who hails from uh, so-called Ecuador. Um, I really, I, I discovered discovered, you know, but I, I found out about uh, Sonia and their work um, a couple of years ago during the lockdown at, a, at a, another poetry event and I really resonated with the like work that they were doing um, because to an extent like me they were a queer uh, Latina immigrant um, with experiences of diaspora um, in the United States and I think they're absolutely fantastic their poetry is amazing and they're doing amazing amazing work especially with undocumented migrants in the US. So I'm going to pass it over to you. Hi, Sonia. 
Well, first of all, wow, your poem. I'm just like sitting here and just like, you know, uh, taking in all like the incredible like pieces you read, but also like your own piece. Like I feel like, um, yeah, I'm just like sinking in into your words. But hi everyone, my name is Sonia Guillensaka. I go by they them pronouns. Uh, I am a poet, artist, culture strategist. Um, and I'm super excited to be here and to talk poetry, to talk, you know, all things arts and culture. Um, and yeah, so I'm excited about our conversation. Oh, thank you so much for coming. I was actually so, so, so psyched when you sent like uh, that email saying you were gonna come. I was like, yes, like fangirling over here, you know. Oh, I actually forgot to mention my pronouns are they them too. Don't misgender me <laughs> to the audience, you know. But anyway. Um, what was I going to say? Right. So I actually wanted to ask you first and foremost about your book, Somewhere We Are Human, which has recently come out um, and we are including in the collection, which I'm super, super excited about. I haven't had the chance to read it yet, but I will when it comes. Um, I mean, do you mind telling me a little bit about it? You know, just uh, anything you want, really. Yeah, of course. Uh, so somewhere we are human. Yesterday was this one month of like it being published. Um, so it is an anthology uh, that I co-edited with Reina Grande. Um, and it was like our intention to build a collection, an anthology of featuring undocumented and formerly undocumented uh, writers, artists, cultural workers, organizers. And so it includes um, 41 pieces and also like the plug. Um, 41 pieces uh, featuring writings from over migrants from like over 21 countries. Um, and for me, it was very important to include uh, writers and artists who are queer, trans, non-binary, um, gender fluid folks, uh, because our movement, our immigrant rights movement, uh, everywhere, but specifically in the United States has been led by undocumented, queer, trans, non-binary folks. And so um, that's my coming, that's my lineage. And so it was important for to highlight those voices. So it's hella queer, hella trans, hella non-binary. Um, and uh, the amount of love we've re been receiving this past month has been incredible. Um, and yeah, there's um, essays, there's poems, there's visual art, and for me, um, it's it's a book that you you have to take your time with. Um, it, it looks small, but the pieces in there are incredible. Um, and this was a project that uh, came about during the pandemic, right at the peak of at the beginning of it, and myself i have imagined to put a collection like this together and uh rain as well um and it was just perfect timing and we have the support of harper collins to put this book together to push it out i i appreciate large publishing uh, spaces uh, making intentional moves to include uh the incredible and brilliant writing of undocumented and migrant folks, um, a large population that is still being left out of like publishing and very high like literary spaces uh, for many reasons. And, and so this is a, a project that I'm very proud of because of the um, incredible pieces that are out in there that is not just like, I love America. No, it's like, let's deconstruct that shit, you know, what are there some of the reasons that you know that we came? Um, how do we uplift our intersections, um, intersectional like issues, climate change to indigenous rights to uh, unpacking um, our anti-blackness or or what does imagining a better world for trans folks look like? Um, so it's a it's a layer complex book uh, uplifting the nuance of being migrant and undocumented in the United States and um, and it's, it's, it's for and by community, like everything about it, um, it is undocumented or formerly undocumented um, done. So even like the cover art, the uh, dandelion is an embroidery that one of our undocumented um, artists did. And, and then you have two like 
editors who are formerly undocumented. So that was very important for us. So yeah, if you can download it, um, it is available in most places, um, local bookstores, I believe, um, Target, Barnes and Nobles, and there's an audiobook that goes with it for like for folks who need um, who have different access needs. Um, so yeah. and we made intentional that the narrators of the audiobooks were also queer and, and trans and non-binary folks. So um, that was an important project for us. Yeah. I also wanted to note that we have about eight minutes left. Do you want to pause and come back? <laughs> 